All right, guys. Um, before we get started, I'll just take a moment to pay tribute to the over 3,000 people uh, who lost their lives on this day 22 years ago. It's, it's very personal, obviously, to us, it being in our backyard and you know, to the 37 Rutgers alums who lost their life that day and their families, you know, our thoughts are with them and, you know, we don't forget. So with that, I'll open it up. Yeah, they're a good football team. Defensively, their front is stout. They have uh, some linebackers that can really run. The secondary is uh, the safeties punish you and the corners can run and cover. So it's, uh, it's a good defense football team. Offensively, uh, their quarterback is a really good player. He's an experienced player. He's a um, strong arm, accurate arm, and can beat you with his feet. Uh, the running back, they have two of them that they play, 33 and 24. They're both good players. Um, offensive line, big. Um, they lost some receivers, don't know. I know one of them had surgery, so he's not going to play. I was familiar with him. We, we tried to recruit him in the portal. Um, and then the other fellow, I don't know. It looked like he pulled up with a hamstring. So I don't know what his status will be. They, they, they went and got some, some uh, portal receivers. Sounds familiar. Um, so that'll be, the, you, you know, they lost their tight end for the season at the beginning of the year. Um, but the two young kids that are playing are, are good players. Uh, one of them is kind of more of a receiver type tight end. The other uh, can do both. Um, special teams, they're sound. You know, you can see they have a true plan to what they're doing. So, yeah, it's a good football team. Um, they lost a tough one to Purdue. Opening week, they, they took control of the game and, and really held control the whole game. So. Um, yeah, we'll have our hands full. Through two games, is there anything you've seen or learned about your team that has changed your, you know, your outlook on the season? How big, how high the ceiling you could see for this team? No, I, I have uh, I have belief in our team from the beginning. Um, where that puts us, you never know because you don't know what the competition is. But I don't concern myself with that. I do see a group that trusts each other, and that was evident in our last game. When things, you know, started to get away from us a little bit, as I told you that night, they came together and they said, "No, we got a job to do. Everybody, go do your job, and this is going to go where we want it to go." And that's exactly what happened. That, that to me is a belief or trust in each other that um, happens when you pay the price together over time, not a year, but over three and four years paying the price together over time. And that's what I keep talking about: the pipeline. We're not, we're not there yet. We got to fill that pipeline with guys that have paid the price together, and they develop together. But uh, we're getting closer. Coach, um, you know we talked before the season about the defensive line. And a lot of the players coming back through two weeks of play. They, now you had a chance to see them on the field. What have you made of how the defensive line has played? I think we've played good. I think we can play much better. Um, probably not what you thought I'd say, but. Um, I think we can play at a much higher level in our defensive front because I think we have enough depth for guys to be fresh. And when you have guys that you have enough people to, to go out there and play and be fresh, then I expect, you know, darn near perfect execution. You know, fatigue is one of the things that can affect your execution. Obviously, your opponent's the other. Coach, I know this has been a lingering issue, but I just wanted to ask you for where this Nassim Brantley thing is headed and if you have any clarity on it. I don't have clarity. As soon as I know, I'll let you know, though. I, I, don't, I don't mind you asking. Um, I wish I knew. But as soon as I do, uh, you'll know it. Just about the NCAA, waiting on the NCAA, right? NCAA purgatory, yes. Coach, are there any updates on Tyler Needham or Christian Dremel's statuses ahead of Virginia Tech? Yeah, Tyler Needham. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to the strategy of 
if it's a seizing ending injury, I'll let you guys know. If I'm not sure if it is or it isn't, then I'll just refer to the availability report on Saturday, just so we have consistency. But yeah, Tyler Tyler had a uh, had a rough rough deal uh, on Saturday night, but uh, we'll see how he, he progresses. I know it's a very small sample size at this point, but the run defense has obviously performed pretty well. Are, are you seeing signs? I guess what's been the biggest key to that? Do you feel like, and, and are you seeing signs that this is something that can be sustained over the long? course of a season against some well, I hope so but it's too early to call it right um, you know playing run defense is is a couple of things number one it's knowing your job and then number two it's chopping your job you got to go chop your job now what does that consist of playing great technique playing with great pad level in the front four um, having proper run fits by the linebackers in the secondary and then everybody swarming the ball and when you get there tackling well and we've been able to do that for the most part you know, when things started to unravel a little, you saw we missed three tackles on one play. And that was when I knew, all right, we got to, let's go. Let's get back to playing our brand of football. But that's what happens when things start to get rolling on you, and that's where you have to be able to put the brakes on and, and go back right back to technique, scheme, execution, and effort. Just from the perspective of Gavin on Saturday, we talked a lot about his performance and throwing away the ball and not the turnovers. But what have you seen leadership-wise, emotionally, how he conducted himself on Saturday that maybe showed that next step in his maturation? Well, I think both games he showed that. You know, he stayed calm. He's been cool on the sideline. Um, it was a little stretch even with him Saturday night that it started to get away, and he brought it back. So... I think that's a step if you're looking for one that's unique to Saturday, that's that's what happened. What's it like with uh, so much depth at running back? Is it a cursing and a blessing at the same time, knowing you have all these guys, you got to share the ball around? Yeah, it's not a curse by any means because I don't. you don't have to share the ball around. I don't – like that's what competition is. The guys who are playing the best are going to get the touches. The guys that are doing the best in practice, the guys that are carrying into the game um, – you know, we love to have that kind of depth at every position because competition, the cream rises to the top. Look, Kamar was the guy that filled in for, for Tyler when, when he was down on Saturday. If, if Tyler can't go, is he, he the guy? And what did you think of how he probably performed? Yeah, we'll see who the guy is. I don't know. Um, you know, we're going to figure that out. But, yeah, that was the immediate plan Saturday night. Um, but we're, we're talking about it as a staff right now. What's the best – you know, again, it's always to get the best five and then get the sixth and the seventh and the eighth. So we'll, we're spending time on that right today as we game plan. Um, did some good things. Did some things that we can't do. You know, if we do them, we'll get beat. But it's a critical position because when I talked about their line, I think their edge guys are dangerous and they, have, they can roll them. That's the one thing that I look at them. I see they roll eight guys. So they're going to be fresh up front, too. Uh, so we're really going to have to be on point with our offensive line because not only do they roll them, but they roll their good players. Stout inside, really athletic outside. Probably the best edge players we've faced so far. Not probably. They're the best edge players we've faced all year. On that note, Coach, just um, you know, how do you feel that the offensive line has gelled? I know coming in with a new uh, offensive line coach, how do you feel like that group has gelled through two weeks of the season as well? We've made improvement, that's for sure. Um, are we anywhere close to where we need to be? No. So improvement's a relative term. We just have to keep getting better every week. That's the key. Keep getting better. Doesn't matter who's out there. We have to be better. Um, we've protected well. You know, we've had given up one sack. A part of that is the quarterback getting rid of it, knowing where he's going with it. But the other part is the protection. Coach, you mentioned that some of the top receivers for Virginia Tech um, have injuries. Is there something that changes in the defense when some of these top receivers um, aren't active for the game? Well, they still have good receivers. I'm just saying these were the guys that they had brought in that uh, I felt were kind of you know similar to like we tried to do. Um, but they still have good receivers. Now, won't, we won't change how we play, no. You got to play Virginia Tech three times before they left for the ACC your first time around, uh, 01 through 03. Any memories at all stick from those three games at all? Just, just curious. Yes. Yeah, Plenty of memories. Yeah. Yeah. Some good, some not so good. We never beat them, so that's not good. Right? We were a different spot, though.
I know you touched on this in your opening remarks, but just today, the anniversary, what were your memories from 22 years ago? I remember you saying, saw the smoke on the field. And yeah, it's very personal. You know, I lost people that, neighbors from when I grew up in, uh, in North Jersey. Um, yeah, it was very personal. We were meeting, it was a, it was a, we're meeting on third down. I remember I was up at the board, drawing on the board and the, one of the uh, assistants came in and said a, a small plane hit, hit one of the towers. And then, you know, as we know, 10 minutes later or whatever it was, it wasn't, uh, everybody started to realize it wasn't a small plane when the second plane hit. And we had a coach on the staff whose wife was working in New York. So he was scrambling, trying to, couldn't get a hold of her. We had two players whose parents worked in the, in the World Trade Center and, and by the grace of God, didn't go to work that day. Um, we had a bunch of people who had obviously connections. So it was, it was scary. I remember we gathered the, gathered the team together and they, they wanted to stick together. They didn't want to go, they didn't want to leave the building. And uh, we knew our game, Bob Mulcahy, he told me, he said, you know, there's no game Saturday. He said, it doesn't matter what anybody says. We were the first ones to cancel our game, but kind of obvious why. I mean, you stand on our practice field, you can see the smoke. Um, but they wanted to go out and practice. I'll never forget, they're like, no, we, let's go out and do something. They didn't want to just sit around. So we went out knowing we weren't having a game, but we went out and practiced. And, um, you know, the coach whose wife was working, you know, he, he spent all his time trying to get a hold of her. And uh, it's scary for all of us, right? Especially in the proximity, having it be in our own backyard. But um, that's why I say, you know, Last year, what was it, two years ago, when we played at Syracuse, was that last year? Two years ago. And, uh, you know, that special uniform that Adidas made for us, which was, I think, really nice. And we were able to send those to the families. You know, I don't know if you remember, we had the names on our helmet. And uh, those were the people we could actually get a hold of and have permission to put their names on our helmet. We were able to send each one of them a commemorative jersey from the game, which, uh, you know, they were very grateful for. So I think we, you know, as a country, I saw a sign the other day, you know, on the highway, it said, uh, report any suspicion of terrorism, right? And it's something that we have to be, you know, constantly vigilant about. Um, but I think we all know that that day changed our world and uh, for everybody, but especially for the people who lost loved ones. Um, I do want to talk, you know, I did it uh, Saturday night. I want to do it again. I'm really proud of our student section. I think we're starting to get a little reputation of having a student section that is uh, a factor. So now that they've set the bar, I'm a, uh, we, we need them. I know our guys just appreciate the heck out of it. So I want to thank them again and call to duty. What time is the game? Three, 3.30 game. So love to have them there again. All right. Thanks, guys.